one of the Isle of Man's most famous houses once stood here, Dawlish Cashin, the home of Jeff the Talking Mongoose. But even before the Dorby spook, the place had a reputation for being uncanny. Stories of the place being haunted by a strange animal existed long before Jeff appeared, but it's not clear whether it was this which was haunting the place when the Irvings first moved in. In 1917, they got in two fellas to add a porch to the front of the house. Collister and Kelly, the names of the fellas were, and they were from Peel, which is a long way, and so it was decided that they would stay here in the house until the work was done. But on that first night, Kelly came into Collister's room and said that he would not stay there another night because of the strange and mysterious sounds he was hearing in his room. In the morning, they made their excuses to Irving, and so they made the long journey back and forth to Peel every day until the job was done. This uncanniness of the place persisted long after Jeff ceased to appear. At the end of Mr. Irving's life, in 1945, his older daughter, Elsie, who never had any association with the Dorby Spook, came to stay to help care for him. And she reported that during the six months she was here, she heard lots of strange noises in the house. And these noises grew louder and more accentuated whenever Vurry came to stay the daughter who was here during the Jeff years. And when Mr. Irving died at 4.10 a.m. on the 6th of August, 1945, Elsie was sat with her mother by the fireplace and she was aghast to see the branch which they sweeped out the ashes with, moving forwards and backwards on its own along the mantelpiece. And they had no explanation for it, but they did note that it stopped at exactly the moment that James Irving died. And when the coffin appeared here a few days later, it was a clear and beautiful night, and yet they could hear the sound of dripping water or rain above them for a time, which they could not find an explanation for. It's all very strange. And it's not known why the later owner pulled down the house long after the interest in Jeff had waned in 1971. But perhaps the uncanniness of the place was still lingering here, and perhaps that had something to do with it. <laughs>